So in general, a floating point number is a number that has a decimal point in there, and that point can float around anywhere within that number, hence the name floating point. Uh, examples are 3.14, which is the value of pi, or one, or even negative 123.5. And float is a data type that represents floating point numbers. A floating point literal is the number that's being used within your Python code. So it's like an actual decimal number somewhere in your code, such as assigning weight to 145.2. The 145.2 is the floating point literal. When using really large floating point numbers, you can use scientific notation in your Python program. For example, if you had 1.87 times 10 to the 45th power, in Python that would be 1.87 E45. That E stands for times 10 to the power of whatever number that follows. The E stands for exponent. The value range for floating point numbers is from 2.3 times 10 to the negative 308th power to 1.8 times 10 to the positive 308th power. So that's a huge range of numbers. Assigning a variable outside of this range causes an overflow error. An overflow happens when a value is too large to be stored in the memory allocated by the interpreter. Also, when printing floating point numbers, you can use f-string formatting to specify the number of decimals to print out. Like for example, if you only wanted to print out the value of pi with up to you know, three decimal places, you would do it as print f, single quote, and then curly braces, math.pi colon dot three f quote. And let's test out some floating point numbers in Python. So we can very easily create a floating point variable such as weight for a person's weight and assign it to 185.3. Let's print it out just to see that it's working. There it is. And let's also let's just, let's just see what type it prints out for that variable weight. We'll wrap that in the type function. So we'll pass the weight to the type function run the program and it tells you that it's a class float so it's a, definitely a floating point number and this number 185.3 is a floating point literal that's being used in our program for some scientific notation we can have like large number and assign that to 105 e 45 and let's print that out see what that looks like print this large number It prints out 1.05e plus 47. Oh, you know what? It's because I forgot to add the dot right there. Yeah, 1.05. So it actually converted it for me using scientific notation and it corrected it. But if I did that, then yep, now I'm getting exactly what's displayed right here. Also, I mean, we could just type in a huge number. See what that does. All right, let's print this out. Oh, it, yeah, I guess it by default it just picks up. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten decimals places. So make it even longer. Going out of the screen. Man, you know what? I want this to even be even bigger. Large number times, yeah, here we go. Oh, all right, now we're getting some somewhere. Now it's 2.325 times 10 to the 21st power. So yeah, took a little bit of effort, but we, forced it to convert itself to scientific notation when printing out. That's pretty cool. Let's try to create an overflow error. Yeah, I mean, let's just make it even bigger. You know, if I stop there, you know, let's just make these, make that a nine. Yeah. Is that an overflow error? Not yet. 
but we could do this large number So we're just going to multiply it by itself three times. No, it's still not an overflow error. Let's just keep multiplying it. Come on, overflow error. Uh, not yet. So, yeah, we're still within the range. So let's, let's just keep doubling that. Here we go. It just definitely had an overflow error because now it says it's INF, which I think stands for infinity. And okay, cool. So I mean, you're not normally going to do anything weird like this, but just know that there are some limitations on what you can assign the values of these numbers to. You're probably not going to have to really worry about that at all. The next thing we're going to do is test out printing floating point numbers using F strings. So let's say you had a number like instead of a large number, let's just say price. The price of something was $23 and this much change. Okay. And we're going to print out let's see the price. And that doesn't look like a price of something. A price usually has two numbers following a decimal place, not a whole bunch of numbers. So to fix the formatting, we can use F string. So we'll type F, single quote, surround the price with curly braces. Then after the word price, we type colon, dot, and after the dot, how many numbers do you want after the decimal place? I want two, type F in there, close the string, and let's run that program and look at that. That looks a little bit better. And we could even stick like a dollar sign in front of it so that it looks more like an actual price. And there we go, $23.43. So yeah, that's it for floating point numbers. Thanks for watching.